Global Catalog Servers. When you need to locate objects that exist outside of your domain, or perhaps an object in a different tree in the forest, this requires the services of the Global Catalog. The Global Catalog is a distributed data repository that contains a searchable, partial representation of every object in every domain in your forest. Or in other words, it knows about every object in your forest. Now by default, the Global Catalog is created on the first domain controller in the first domain in your forest. Although after you add in another domain controller, you can move this role to another server if you like. This server is then known as the Global Catalog Server. Now the Global Catalog Server performs three key functions. It enables users to log onto the network by providing universal group membership information to a domain controller when the logon process starts. When a user logs onto the domain, they first need to be authenticated. Now the global catalog is the only place in a forest that can identify which universal groups the user is a member of. And for this reason, the global catalog server is required for a user to successfully authenticate in a domain that has universal groups. Now because universal groups can contain users from multiple domains, not just the domain where the group's actually stored, and it can also be used to provide access to resources in any domain, only the Global Catalog Server is guaranteed to contain all of the universal group members that will be required for authentication. For example, a user in our London child domain might also be a member of a universal group that's stored in the parent winstructorlab.com domain. But this universal group provides access to resources back in the London domain. So to ensure that these users are authorized to access resources in this case, the domain controller must have access to the membership of all universal groups in the forest, which of course means it'll need to get this information from the global catalog. So if the global catalog server is not available, the user won't be able to log on. The global catalog is also required to locate objects in Active Directory that can be in any domain in your forest. And when you're searching for an object inside your forest, this will be using an LDAP global catalog query on port 3268 for regular queries or 3269 if you're using SSL. And finally, the global catalog also resolves user principal names when the domain controller that's authenticating your logon doesn't know anything about the account that you're using. And the global catalog will also be used when exchange users need to access the global address list as well. Now by default, it's the very first domain controller that's installed in your forest that automatically assumes the role of the global catalog server. This means that unless you install another global catalog server somewhere else in your forest, then you have a single point of failure. So if this server goes down, then no one in the entire forest is going to be able to log in, and that's really bad news, especially for your career aspirations. Now, the other issue here is performance. If every time a person attempts to locate an object in the forest, they need to contact the global catalog server, then that's not only going to slow things down, but again, we still have that single point of failure, and if this server goes down, then there's trouble. So why not just install the global catalog on every domain controller in the forest then? Well, sure, that's definitely another option, but this also means that we'll have lots of servers that need to replicate their data with each other, and that'll mean a lot of replication traffic going all over the place in your network. But do remember, like we've already said, by default, only the very first domain controller that you install in the forest will have the global catalog on it, and it also means if that server goes down, suddenly everyone in the entire forest won't be able to log on. So at a minimum, you should be prepared to install two domain controllers with the global catalog for reasons of redundancy. But before we blindly install our global catalog servers, we need to give some thought to figuring out where the best place would be for them and how many we need. As a general rule though, if you have lots of domains in your forest and multiple domain controllers in each domain, you'll probably find that it's going to generate more WAN traffic than it would had you have placed a global catalog server at the site. 
Now, the other thing is since domain controllers refresh every single user in its site once every eight hours, this could also mean a lot more WAN traffic than if you had a global catalog server in the site as well. But on the flip side, let's say we have a small site that's connected by a slow link and it only has a few users in it. If we were to deploy a global catalog server here, then we're going to have a lot of replication traffic that's probably not necessary coming back and forth. So as you can see, there's a lot more to it than just throwing a global catalog server on every domain controller. Although at the end of the day, every combination will work. It just comes down to choosing what's more efficient for your own network. Now, the other thing we need to concern ourselves with is which server holds the global catalog. Now, we can install on every single domain controller if we like, and that's certainly one option, or we could install on only select domain controllers. But another golden rule that everyone tells you that you have to live by is when you're choosing to only install the global catalog server on some and not all of your domain controllers, it must not be installed on the server that's holding the infrastructure master role. Well, there's only partial truth in that statement. Firstly, by default, the first server you install in your forest is going to hold all five operations master roles, which by the way is something that we will cover in detail in another video. Now one of these roles is the infrastructure master role, which is responsible for updating cross-domain group to user references. This server is also of course going to hold the global catalog as well, since there aren't any other domain controllers in our network at this point. Now, if your network stays at a single domain model like this, you don't need to configure anything at all since the infrastructure master's job is to manage cross-domain references, such as adding a user from one domain into a group from a different domain. Now, if you only have a single domain, the infrastructure master server doesn't have to do anything. However, when we start adding additional domains, the best practice is to either only put the infrastructure master role on the same server as the global catalog server if every single domain controller in your domain is a global catalog server as well. The alternative is when you only have some domain controllers that are also global catalog servers, then you'll need to transfer the infrastructure master role to another server that isn't a global catalog server. Now, since the infrastructure master role is a domain role, you will again either need all domain controllers within the domain to be global catalog servers, or at least one server not running as a global catalog server, and then you'd transfer the infrastructure master role to that server, and transferring these roles is something that we will cover in another video. Now, creating or removing global catalog servers is an incredibly easy thing to do, and it's configured at the site level. So we'll go and click on Start, and we'll go to Administrative Tools, and we'll launch Active Directory Sites and Services. And now we'll expand Sites. Now, since we haven't configured Sites on this server yet, we'll expand the default first site name, then we'll expand Servers, and we'll expand the server we're on now, DCO2, and then we'll right click on NTDS settings and we'll choose properties. Now right here in the middle we can see we have a global catalog checkbox. So to create a global catalog on this domain controller, we'll check the box. To delete a global catalog server, we'll remove the check. It's that simple. So the global catalog is a good thing, it helps us speed up logons, but if the global catalog server is unavailable, then as we've discussed, the result is users can't log in. But there is something that we can do to alleviate this problem and it's called universal group membership caching. Remember, when a user logs onto the domain, the local domain controller needs to find out what universal groups this user belongs to. The reason it needs to know this is so our user here will be able to access resources in the forest such as files and folders and printers that they have permission to access and they'll be denied access to those things that they aren't authorized to access. So the domain controller will go and fetch that information from the global catalog. Now the global catalog could be on the same server as the domain controller that the user is authenticating with or another one entirely and that all depends on how you've configured your own network. 
Now, once the domain controller has retrieved this information, it can then allow the user to log on and this process will continue each time a user logs onto the domain. However, since Windows Server 2003, we've been able to configure universal group caching to prevent the domain controller from having to contact the global catalog server every time the user logs on, just to find out what universal groups the user is a member of. So if we enable universal group caching on our domain controller, we can now cache this information and have it stored locally so the domain controller now doesn't have to ask the global catalog server for it each time. Now it can just serve up this information from its own local cache and that'll save bandwidth as well as time. And in addition, if the link to the global catalog server goes down, users will still be able to log on due to their group information being able to be retrieved from the cache. And if we look back at the example we used earlier where we had a small site that's connected by a slow link and it's only got a few users in it, instead of deploying a global catalog server here and having all of that replication traffic coming back and forth, we could have enabled universal group membership caching to speed things up. And if the link to the global catalog server goes down, these users can still log on. Okay, back on our domain controller here, to enable universal group membership caching, in Active Directory Sites and Services, we'll need to select the site in which you want to enable caching. So here I'm going to select our default first site name. And in the right hand pane, we'll right click on NTDS Site Settings and select Properties. Now at the bottom of this window, we can select the Enable Universal Group Membership Caching box. And clicking OK at this point is probably the best option as it will automatically select the most efficient path to a site with a global catalogue. However, if you want caching to occur from a specific site, you can change to a site of your own choice from the drop down box here. Now remember that if the global catalogue server is down or otherwise uncontactable due to perhaps the WAN link being down, then users won't be able to log onto the domain. But if we have universal group membership caching in our network, you'll be able to log on regardless. So whether you enable universal group membership caching is up to you. Personally, I like this feature, but depending on how your network is structured, you might prefer to have additional global catalog servers configured in each site for redundancy. Now, another thing that the global catalog server is used for is resolving UPN suffixes. So if we go and click on Start and then Administrative Tools and we'll launch Active Directory Users and Computers. Now we'll expand our domain here and we'll select the Users container. And I've got a user here called Bob, so let's right click on him and we'll select Properties, followed by the Account tab. Now down here you can see Bob's UPN of bob at winstructorlab.com. And you'd know from previous videos that Bob's able to use this user principal name to log on to our domain. But let's say Bob doesn't like our choice of domain name, or perhaps he's working with another department that would like their own domain suffix. And I'm referring to the winstructorlab.com part here. Now, let's say that Bob works for the sales department, and they'd like to be able to log on with winstructorsales.com instead of winstructorlab.com. Well, we can arrange that for the sales team by clicking on Start, and we'll go to Administrative Tools, and we'll open up Active Directory Domains and Trusts, and then we'll right click on Active Directory Domains and Trusts, and we'll choose Properties. And in here, we can define any additional UPN suffixes that we'd like to add. So here we could add in winstructorsales.com, and we'll click Add. We could also add in winstructormarketing.com and we'll click add again. Now we could even add in something like dell.com and click add. Now, when we go and click OK, and we'll go back to Active Directory Users and Computers and we'll go and right click on Bob's account and we'll choose Properties and the Account tab. Now we're able to change Bob's UPN suffix to one of these other ones and then Bob will be able to log on to our domain using bob at whateverwechoose.com. Look, 
In reality, it's unlikely that you're going to provide your users with a user principal name of something else just for the sake of it, or something that has nothing to do with your domain, such as Dell.com in my case. The real value here of using UPN suffixes is that in larger organizations, you're going to run into a situation where the UPN of, say, our user Bob here might be something ridiculously long. So if we cancel this for the moment, and let's go and right click on Active Directory Users and Computers, and we'll choose to change our domain. And we'll click Browse, and we'll go to our London subdomain here. All right, now we'll expand the london.winstructorlab.com domain, and we'll select the Users container. And in here, we'll right click and choose to create a new user. Now let's say that this guy is called Jim. Now from here we can choose what UPN suffix we want to give Jim, but do notice that his default here of london.winstructorlab.com. I mean, that's a pretty long name. But if we had another child domain which was appended to the front here, you can imagine that this name is starting to get pretty long. Sure, we could force Jim here to type in london.winstructorlab.com or whatever his UPN suffix is. However, we could also choose to give Jim one of these shorter UPNs, such as our parent domain here of winstructorlab.com, and that would certainly be much nicer for him. Now, you might actually be wondering what's up with all these other domain suffixes. How can we log on with dell.com when we clearly don't own the dell.com domain? And Dell.com certainly has nothing to do with our domain either. Well, that's where the Global Catalog comes into play. The Global Catalog is also responsible for maintaining an index of a user's user principal name to the real name of their actual domain. So Jim here would log in. First of all, DNS is going to be responsible for locating the IP address of the Global Catalog server. Once the Global Catalog server is found, it'll be the service that's responsible for telling Jim's computer that Jim at Dell.com actually belongs to the london.winstructorlab.com domain. So Jim's computer sends a login request to the real domain controller at london.winstructorlab.com and then he'll be able to log on to the correct domain. So that's the global catalog. Again, at the absolute minimum, I'd recommend that you make at least two domain controllers in your forest into global catalog servers. Look, truthfully, there's no right or wrong here. There's only better. If you simply stick with the default global catalog server that's installed in the very first domain controller in your forest, everything will work. It just won't be very efficient. So sit down, take some time to think about your domains and your sites and whether they'd benefit from having a global catalog server or perhaps only universal group membership caching. Now, as you've probably come to realize, a little bit of planning here is going to go a long way.